Okay, so um, we're going to start again, guys. I hate mentioning this, but uh, PSA, public service announcement. Definitely subscribe to my video, comment, suggestion, ask me questions, etc., etc. I'm here to help you be better at this program. I see a lot of bad people, bad design, bad technique. I just want to share and give back to, uh, you know, for being very fortunate living in Manhattan across from Central Park. I have a charmed life, so I enjoy doing what I do and sharing my knowledge with you guys. Okay, so let's finish formatting and designing at the site. So let's understand what we have so far. Okay, now, important step here. Okay, under the, if I come in here and click this icon right here, this will toggle between turning my CSS rules on or off. Very important step. This is what the page looks like with no CSS rules, just pure content. Similar to what we did in Firefox in a previous video. If I click again, this is what the page looks like with CSS rules. No CSS rules, with CSS rules. Now, this icon in CSS5, in CS5, in CS5.5, in CS4, by the way, too, is not there by default. What you have to do is you need to go under the View menu. And based on these choices, you need to go down here to Toolbars and make sure style rendering is checked. By default, Dreamweaver does not ship with it checked or striped or whatever your preference is. So you have to have this checked. So if this is not checked, that icon disappears. So again, important step here, it's under View, Toolbars, Stop Rendering. So what that does, it enables you to make sure there's no tag or formatting issues with your page. Make sure you don't have an extra return in there, et cetera, et cetera. So this icon right here turns off your CSS, puts on your CSS. If I click on Live View, it gives a facsimile. It's not a perfect rendition, but a close rendition of what the page would look like in a web browser. So Live View. Okay, so let's finish designing our site. Okay, now since we made our height flexible to the height of the site within the content, we're going to do the same thing with our site nav. So main content, h2 tag, you go right there. So we're going to take site nav, double click, and we're going to give this no height. Because we just want the height to basically adjust to the height of itself. Okay. Now let's start putting in some content for our news section. So I'm just going to go and grab some of this. Now this is a very, very cool technique I'm going to share with you. Okay. So we're going to double click news bar and we're going to paste. And I'm just going to call this my news section. Now, let's say these are different news articles that are going to go to different full pages. So, we're going to do something like hyphen read more. Uh, read. Spelling read is very important to understand. <laughs> okay. So, now, here's what I want to do here. I want to make a hyperlink placeholder. What do I mean by that? I want this to behave like a link or a hyperlink, but I don't want it to go any place right now because we're not in we're only we're in design mode right now. So the best way and the simplest way and the only way to make this a placeholder is to select the text, come down here to the property palette where it says link. We're not going to link it to anything. We want it to behave like a hyperlink. So what do we do? We put in the pound symbol or the hash mark. The pound symbol. Now, very, very important step here. That makes it a hyperlink. Now, if you put anything but the pound symbol, if you type in the word anything, if you type in the word but, or if you type in two X's, or if you type in Joe or Jenny or Tila or Christine, whoever, it's going to go for a page. It's going to look for a page with those names. However, if you put in the pound symbol, you're not going to get a page error. So if you just want to create a hyperlink, viewable hyperlink, so it looks like a hyperlink, and it behaves like a hyperlink, you select what you want to affect, and you put in the pound symbol. It could not be that simple. It could not be simpler than that. We're going to take this content. We're going to copy that. Edit Copy or Command C, Macintosh, Control C, Windows, Paste, Control V, Macintosh, I'm sorry, Command V, Macintosh, Control V, Windows. So we're going to copy, 
Turn key. Paste. Turn key. Paste. Turn key. Paste. Now, put on your thinking caps here for a second, guys. Obviously, you'd have to change the content, and eventually it's going to go to an actual page name. But we're generically just going to put in news stories. So let's undo this for a second. Command Z. So let's just call this news story one. In fact, let's type this lowercase and I'll show you a little trick here. I'm going to copy that, return key. So let's just call this news story two. New story three, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, so how are we doing? We have having fun. Just see how simple this is. Okay. Now, I want to do a couple things here. Okay. I want to visually separate these news stories with a data line underneath the news story. Okay, so how can I do this? Okay. So I can do this a variety of different ways. Okay. I could put these inside of different div tags, which that sounds like a lot of poop jumping to put these inside of separate div tags. Okay? Or I could basically say I want to separate these news stories by putting a dot line above this tag. Okay? So what is this tag? Well, this tag is the H2 tags. So we can get a rule for the H2 tag. Okay, so we're going to select the tag, and again, understand something very profound here. This is the same tag as this. They're the same H2 tags. We're going to select the tag. We're going to select the tag, and we're going to come over here and make a rule. We're going to make a rule for the selected tag. More specifically, the H2 tag when H2 tag is inside of newsbar. Okay. And this is a very powerful concept. So we just want to put a data line above the H2 tag to separate each news story. So how can we do this? Well, we can go to border and we can say top, top dotted, dotted just because we can. We can make this uh, one pixel of red. Now, I know this is not going to look good for people to see it. Now, watch what happens. If I hit the Apply option, move this out of the way for a second. Now, I have a dot line above. So let's double click this. So, border, let's make that two pixels so I can see it a little bit better. So I now have a dot line above each news story. Okay, pretty cool. Now, very important step here, I don't want the dot line, actually, let's make this a little thicker so you can see it. I don't want the dot line smashing up against the word news story. So I could go to box, and from the top of the box, we're going to put in, say, let's do 0.4 M spaces. So if I hit the apply option, there's more space between each story. And if you don't want that much, let's say 0.25, understand? M, E, M is equal to the height of the letter M. Okay. Now, let's focus on something here. Let's move this out of the way here. Now, I got these cool hip red lines here to separate the news stories, which is kind of a nice thing. Okay. Very nice. Okay. Looks nice. I could change the color. But it's kind of Ah, that I got this red line here because I, it, it, there's nothing to separate it from, so technically this red line should not really be here. It should be here and here and here, but I don't want the red line here. So how can I solve that problem? Okay, let's think about this very, very intuitively. Okay, so most of you say, oh, I get it, make a rule. But make a rule for what? Because this H2 tag is the same H2 tag. All H2 tags... So how can I talk to, and this is a very, very important part of professional CSS development. How can I talk to this H2 tag separate from this H2 tag? As an example, if you were to line up five guys from Indiana, 
They're all tan, all five foot eight, and they're all about the same build. How would you tell them apart? By their name. Well, let's say they're all called Joe. Well, how do you tell them apart from there? By their last name. Well, let's say they're all called Joe Smith. But some Joe Smith is from Indiana. Some Joe Smiths are from Kansas. Some Joe Smiths are from Manhattan. The bottom line of what I'm trying to get at, guys, I can ID that particular tag. As an example, this is a div tag branding. This is a div tag site nav. This is a div tag main content. This is a div tag news bar. How don't I talk to the div tags differently? Because, because, because I gave them separate IDs. Pound symbol is the ID I gave the tag an ID. Guess what? Any tag, paragraph tag, div tag, header tag, image tag can have a different ID. Therefore, I can talk to it differently. Now, the only rule that comes by when creating a rule for a tag is it can start with a number. So how do we do this? We're going to select the tag, the H2 tag. We're going to come here to ID, and we're going to call it what it is, which is F-I-R-S-T, camel case, news story. So that's ID as my first news story. I selected the tag. I didn't select the text. I selected the tag. Came down here and called anything you want. If you want to call Ishkabibble monkey breath, be my guest. But you can't call it starting out with number. Okay? So when I return key, this is now the name of that tag. That tag has been ID'd, just like the div tags have been ID'd. So I select the tag and I come over here and I make a rule. I make a rule for the selected tag. So first story inside of newsbar. I could do this as well, but so it's less confusing here. It's the first news story. Now, notice I didn't call first H2 tag because I could have different H2 tags someplace else. I'm going to call it specifically what it is. First news story. So I hit OK. So based on these choices, I don't want it to have a border. So simple, simple, simple. I can just go here and say none. I don't want it to have anything. No width, no color, no height, not a nil, none. So if I hit the apply option, it's now gone. But here's the catch, okay? The parent tag to this tag was the H2 tag. So if you recall, the H2 tag had padding at the top. I don't want to have padding at the top. So what do I put here? I'm going to deselect, so for the top, what do I put for a value? What do I put for a value if I don't want padding? The answer is zero, because zero is a value. Nothing is not a value. Nothing's default. So very important step here. Don't confuse nothing with zero. Nothing with zero. Those are two different things. Nothing is default. Zero is a value, just like point two is a value. And five is a value, and red's a value. Don't confuse nothing with zero. So for the apply option, if you look over here to the right, you'll see it gets rid of that extra space, which shouldn't be there. Make a change, save a change. Now, the only exception to nothing and zero is this. If you have nothing in your bank account or zero in your bank account, in that particular case, it's the same thing. Okay? So make a change, save a change. So now our site is starting to look like a website. So now I can go down here. I can hit the return key and paste. And it's automatically going to put in that red border because that's the rule I had for that particular tag. How cool is that? So once you have your tags rules, rules for your tags, then you can talk to them specifically. It's a very, very powerful, very, very functional technique. Okay, so let's do one last thing here. Okay, so let's take or let's take our H2 tag, H2 tag, H2 tag specifically for news bar, and let's just change this to capitalized. So no, we wrote it lowercase. It's going to be capital N, capital S, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So that's enough for 
Now continue with the next video and again make sure you subscribe, send me comments.